Hello again and welcome to Arch Eats. My name is George Mayhe. And I'm Cheryl Bear. And this is episode 17 for those of you keeping score. This episode of Arch Eats is sponsored by South Grand Cultural Alliance. Today we're following up on two installments of our favorite patios in town with a segment on our favorite barbecue joints in town. This is going to be controversial. Which we, which we thought was apropos since we just started grilling season here in St. Louis. And at the end, we'll end up with a micro rant about the one thing you don't want to do if you're trying to make a name for yourself in the barbecue business. But first, it's what I can't stop thinking about. And uh, appropriately, I chose something that's smoked. Oh, look at that. Yes. So, you're so on theme. I love it. So this week, it's the fried bologna sandwich at the Parkmore, which Ooh. is an unbelievable thing. The bologna is house made and it's placed between get ready for this, two grilled cheese sandwiches, which makes it the whopper of bologna sandwiches. Do you have to sign a waiver to like eat this from your cardiologist or something? <laughs> it sounds more intimidating than it is. Yeah. And I saw it on the menu one time and I said, there's just no way, but I was presented with it and I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. I thought it was going to be six inches tall, but no, it is actually negotiable. So this is uh, this isn't mystery meat bologna. This is uh, homemade bologna that's made from pork shoulder. It's not like Ooh. you know all these strange parts of the of the animal. It's more like it's, a nice terrine. Or yes, something. exactly. Very fancy. And, and and this is this is made by hand and it's stuffed into that nice telltale red casing. They smoke it for a couple hours. The owner of the park more learned it from his former business partner, a guy named Eric Tyrone of Cochon Butcher Shop in New Orleans. And anybody oh, wow. that's been to New Orleans knows that's super high street cred. This bologna, he slices it and it's crisped on top of a flat top, which caramelizes it and gives it a little char. And then they add shredded lettuce and tomato with a little oil and vinegar pickles. And there's a special Dijonais sandwich spread that they put on it. And you actually need the two cheese sandwiches to hold all this together. It really does make a lot of sense. But I'm telling you, it's a beautiful sandwich. It's a don't miss for bologna lovers and, and a must try for people whose bologna experience is limited to Oscar Mayer. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. This sounds like a definite upgrade from my... From uh, Mama's bologna yeah, sandwich. Yeah, from my a, North County childhood. Yeah, no, this is this is the real deal. And don't be intimidated by the name or the description. Just order it. It's wonderful. Wow, that does sound delicious. I love it. Well, mine is, I guess, less about a particular dish than it is about a place. And Speaking of my North County background, you know I love a good dive. I love a good dive bar. I cannot get enough. It's probably my favorite genre of uh, culinary experiences. Cheryl, the dive bar queen. Exactly, right? But this is a place out on Manchester in West County. I'm pretty sure it's in Baldwin, but it's it's It one gets of those. blurry out there. I mean, we all it's know past it 270, but before Clarkson. It's, right, right. You know. There is a place there called Bones French Quarter, and this place is, it's as divey as it comes. It's the kind of place where you're going to play Kino, and they have chilled fireball shots and Jägermeister shots ready mm. to go out of, like, solo cups. I mean, it is that kind of place. So I was a little skeptical when my significant other told me that he wanted to take me to breakfast there, that he had been, he'd stopped in for breakfast, and... And, and have like, a nice what? Jaeger shot. Yeah, for breakfast. exactly. I'm like, come on. I I don't know about this. I was blown away. This place has outstanding diner style breakfast. Like I thought it was just going to be like, oh, okay, it's passable for like a bar, just you know, some fried eggs, so is some it, bacon, is it and all Cajun that. Cajun themed no, breakfast. Really, their breakfast is pretty much just think like kind of classic American diner breakfast. Think. Omelets, bacon, corned beef hash, Benedicts, egg sandwiches, things of that sort. But I was really blown away by how well executed it was. The omelet was massive. I guess it's a three egg omelet, but it's one of the largest omelets I've ever seen. Perfectly cooked, no brown, which three, we know is my standard. Three eggs and a lot of air. Three eggs and a lot of air, exactly. But this one did. I feel like there was milk or cream or something in there because it was pretty luxurious, but overfilled. Flawlessly cooked. Their corned beef hash was great. Their bacon was like thick sliced and beautifully cooked. Sausage patties were really good too. They had great Bloody Marys, of course. You know, you would think they would get that right. 
he told me I wasn't allowed to talk about it because he didn't <laughs> want it to get busy. But alas, here we are. Sorry. I'm um, sorry about that. But they just deserve it. And I think it's one of the best breakfast spots out there in West County. Now, is this Bones French Quarter breakfast, lunch, and dinner? So they actually do serve it seven days a week, which is, I, I was surprised to learn. I thought maybe it was just a weekend thing, but this is seven days a week. The hours vary between weekdays and weekends. So double check that on their website. It's the place to be out there in West County. And one you wouldn't think of right away. Not think of at it for all. Cajun food. You would never think right. it's hiding in plain sight. That's a good tip, which we just let out of the bag. Yes. We'll be right back. South Grand Cultural Alliance is proud to host the South Grand Dine Around Restaurant Crawl on Thursday, June 20th. Get your taste buds ready to eat around the world within five blocks as you sample foods from 20 of South Grand's restaurants and bars. Purchase five tickets for $40 and enjoy small plates, desserts, and drinks from a set menu at each venue. For more details, visit southgrand.org slash events. So that brings us to the main course for the day, which is our favorite barbecue joints in town. But before we get into that, just like I did with patios, I want to begin with an overview, some thoughts and observations about the craft. And it is a craft, which brings us to Gerard Craft, who will be opening Expat Barbecue later this year at City Foundry. He's got the proper overview. He says that every culture has some form of barbecue. Everybody cooks with fire. The difference is how you season it how you prepare it, whether you grill it or smoke it or, or throw it in a pit. What he's doing at Expat is what he calls, quote, globally inspired barbecue. And that's what he will introduce there, which is quite an evolution from the barbecue of our youth. Right? Absolutely. And uh, Cheryl, you remember this, the word St. Louis style barbecue back in the day meant grilled then slathered in sauce. Yes. Drowned in sauce. The sauce was most often malls. Yeah, I was going to say preferably malls. Or a doctored up version of malls, which is also good. Which has to be bush beer. For some reason, bush in malls is like the classic way to pair yeah, that. Yeah, six pack of beer, five for the cook and one for the malls. People don't know that malls, and I didn't know this either, it was the nation's first commercially bottled barbecue sauce, and oh, it was made oh. right here in St. Louis. What do you know? So we, and we fast forward to today, and the, the St. Louis barbecue spots today are becoming better known nationally for their Memphis-style cue, right? The dry rub mm -hmm. and, and slow smoked rather than sauce slathered. And that's a style that was largely really popularized by the arrival of Pappy's Smokehouse in 2008, I think. Pappy's, Bogarts, Beastcraft, all these guys have won multiple national awards since then, and they continue to do so today. I was talking to Mike Emerson, co-founder of Pappy's, and he says, this was interesting, he said to grill stuff at home, but that smoked meats are trickier to cook, and they travel well, so look to your favorite smokehouse for them. And he said favorite is in quotes. He's careful not to say the best, because the best is so subjective. Besides having good food, a favorite place is where you feel the most love. And you know where I'm getting to here, because that's what he and the Pappy's family team did so well for so many years, greeting you at the door with a yes. big smile and a little snack to eat. And they did that better than anybody and taught everybody else in town to do that. So you were standing in line, but it, it, it feels like a party. It, it doesn't it, feel like a It was like a party. A slog. Everybody was making friends. Yeah. Uh, there was a guy I remember one time, uh, the line was long. It was 45 minutes long. And he ordered an Emos pizza while he was standing oh, in line. Terrible. The Emos pizza arrived and he opened it up and shared it with his line mates. <laughs> I so, love it. It's true. It's honest to God true. So anyway, in, in our discussion of barbecue today, we're going to try to refrain from using the word best. Instead, we decided to approach this a little bit differently. And Cheryl, this was your idea, kind of like a professional draft. Why don't you kind of explain how we're going to do this today? Yeah. So we thought barbecue is such a fun topic and why not lean into the fun aspect of it with like, we're going to do a draft of our favorite smokehouse. So we actually have a coin that we're going to flip to see who goes first. Maybe one of us has a favorite that the one's going to steal for their particular smokehouse and we're going to have to exchange irked glances with one another across the table here but we're going to pick our favorites yep. one favorite per category one favorite across per category. the categories ribs brisket side dishes and so on it's kind of like the dream team of barbecue exactly is what i was thinking is that accurate that's accurate we're each assembling our dream team our barbecue 
Smokehouse Dream Team. And and so to go first, we shall flip a coin. Oh, goodness. Shall we call it. Okay. I'll go heads. Tails it is. Oh, no. No. My two-tailed coin came through for Oh, me. darn it. The first, I guess, you know, a lot of people judge barbecue by a lot of things, but I think brisket is a good place to start. Oh, it's, it's the, the only place to start. It, and it's because it's the hardest cut to cook. Mm -hmm. And any of these guys will tell you that it's it's just tricky. And it's every every brisket is different. Every brisket cooks at a different rate. Every brisket has to be trimmed differently. It's not like throwing a bunch of chickens in the smoker and, sure. and pulling them out after two hours. Brisket is difficult. And any of these pit masters will tell you that. So my pick for brisket, and don't you can steal this if you want, but but here we go, is from Stellar Hog. Ah. Again, this is Alex Cup's place. The the bark is perfect. It's salty. It's peppery. The thing that he does best, it yeah, it's laden with fat, right? As brisket is, but it's rendered to the point that it's more like mm. a sauce. Oh, it's so wonderful. And I stole this line from you. This is the brisket you could butter your biscuit with. Yes. And the reason is because that fat is rendered so perfectly. You know, not rendered, it's it's unappealing. You know, mm -hmm. I just, you know, I'll cut fat off uh, because it's not rendered properly. It's kind of gross. But here it can and it should be eaten. So Thank you, Alex, for making such a wonderful brisket at Stellar Hog. Yeah. Well, Alex and Stellar Hog's brisket is among my favorite, but I will try not to. I will wipe off my tears because I do have a really great other top choice for this, which is Beast Craft Barbecue, David and Megan Sandusky's now Belleville only smokehouse there. Like at Stellar Hog, David gets that perfect bark, that perfect rendered fat on there. It's just, it ends up being luxurious, you know? I mean, you you don't want the lean cut. You no, want the fatty right. cut. Like when someone asks you if you want a lean cut, you just give them a, a dirty look, you know, because there's no choice right, when you're at right. beast. Properly handled fat is flavor, as my grandma yes, used to say. Absolutely. So I will go with David Sandusky beast for my brisket. Next category, uh, you go first. Okay, now I get to go first here since you got it. And so for ribs, I'm going super classic with this. You already talked about Pappy's, just how they kind of ushered in this kind of new era of barbecue here in St. Louis. And to me, the reason you go to Pappy's is for the ribs. Their ribs just, they were, I think they were amongst the first people here in town who really kind of flipped that switch, that dry rub you know, a little bit of pull, a little bit of chew. Right, not fall off the bone. Yeah, bulb. not covered in sauce so you could actually taste the nuance of the different woods they're smoking it with. There's like a natural sweetness that the way they do it brings out in the meat. So I've just got to go Pappy's as my as my ribs choice. And, and these, these ribs, like we said, have won awards. They're known throughout the country. People take them to people across the country. My niece was going through security at Lambert Airport with a slab of Pappy's ribs. Oh, that's wonderful. And this, the security person said, I, I, what, is that an animal in there? And she goes, no, it's Pappy's ribs. And, and she got a wink and said, we're definitely going to have to confiscate those. Oh, that's wonderful. So, and there are stories about Pappy's ribs on planes. Mike Emerson tells a story. He said somebody had a slab of ribs. And there was somebody who said, I smell Pappy's ribs. And they were right. And oh, it was wow. a slab of Pappy's ribs. So anyway, there's a lot of history and a lot of great stories yes. that, that go with Pappy's. I'm going to go with the sister restaurant, Bogart's. Okay, okay. Bo Bogart's Fair does choice. the same. It's basically the same. It's the same rib. It's the same rub. But what they do, and, and most people that know Bogart's know this, they glaze it with an apricot glaze after it's smoked. And then they take a roofer's torch a roofer's torch, not just a little plumber's torch, but this yeah. monster thing that sounds like a jet engine. Nice. And, and I remember Skip Steele would slap, would take this thing over his shoulder and fire this thing up oh. and caramelize the apricot glaze on those ribs. And it, I mean, it was so beautiful, it was tasty and so beautiful, you could see yourself in it. And wow. I, this was years ago when Bogart started. I never forgot it. And those ribs are still the same to this day. Yeah, that's such a good choice. It sounds like something out of Mad Max with this like flamethrower. Uh, it was, it's insane. And to hear there. that thing get fired up, you yes. just have to smile. So thanks, Skip Steele, for coming up with that one. Our next Dream Smokehouse category is it's something which sometimes I find like it, we take it for granted. 
because we feel like this is, you know, this is just kind of a stand. None like, of this is, should be tech because it's it all shouldn't. difficult. So you get to choose. You get first pick for pulled pork. Pulled pork. I'm going to go with Beastcraft again. And again, David Sandusky is this. He's a master pit master. And he, I know he uses a brown sugar rub. But what he is able to do is, I think a lot of it, it with pork shoulder is obviously cooking properly, but it's also pulling properly and making sure that yes. there's enough fat in, in each portion yes. and not too much fat. I've had pulled pork sandwiches that are entirely fat. I've had them that there's no fat and they were dry as a bone. If you see any photos of Sandusky's pulled porks, they're all perfect. And it's not like it's some crafted just for the photo purposes. That pulled pork is, it, it looks that way. It's truth in advertising. So my choice is also going to be in the Metro East. I'm going with Shorty's Smokehouse, which is, you know, you talk about pulled pork. And the one thing that I always find is a lot of times it ends up being shredded pork at places. There is a difference. like Or chunked pork. Or chunk. Well, this, what I love about it is, so first of all, they actually fortify that like once the pork is pulled apart, Oh, they gild it with these natural drippings, and then they put a little bit of their dry rub on there. So you've got, what I love is, I find it very important that you still have caramelized exterior right. bits, bits in there. Yep. So they've got this great ratio of these caramelized, like, hunks, that great rendered fat, succulent meat, and then it's all just kind of, I don't want to go so far as say glazed. That's why I keep saying gilded. You know, it's just glistens mm. with these natural pork jus drippings. I love that. I mean, what with, more do you want? It, it's like pure. Glistens with natural pork jus drippings, folks. Did you get all that? I'm telling me. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Next category is chicken wings, smoked wings. Everybody loves a good wing. What you got? So I'm going with a little bit of a wild card here that I don't think people think about. And that is Big Chief Roadhouse, which is way out in Wildwood. That's in your hood. That's in my hood. It's the closest restaurant to me, technically. So maybe maybe proximity is, uh, is weighing in here. But yep. I don't think so. They've got a great smoker out there. They do really great ribs on Saturdays only. But their wings are something that they always have on the menu. And these are just, they've got this really great dry rub that has a little bit of tingly heat, a little bit of sweetness. You get gentle smoke. It's not so much that it's overwhelming. You can still taste the meat of the chicken. And then the chicken itself, there, I know we've talked about wings that have a little bit of extra meat on them. Like we've kind of talked about the benefits of like smaller wings. And these are pretty good sized wings here, but so tender, so pull apart just absolutely wonderful. They basically like hit the right note in every category on there. So I'm going to go Big Chief Roadhouse on this. Okay. I am going to go with a place that people might have forgotten about it because it was closed for a year, the Shaved Duck. Oh, They yes. do a, their, their wings have always been good. There's a new owner there, Guy Fietti, called the Shaved Duck the best barbecue joint in the country. Yes. I mean, it's got good genes there. It's got some good bones, so to speak. The, the wings. That was a great pun, by the yeah, way. Yeah, do you like that? The wings are, they're, obviously, they're smoked, but then they're fried. I do like that Ooh, touch because yeah. sometimes you need that just, one, to heat it up, and two, just to give it a little extra Christmas. A little texture but, there. Yeah, and, and so you can get them dry rubbed. You can get a buffalo style, but there's also a sweet and spicy honey ginger sauce that they have. I don't remember seeing that before, but I'm, I'm looking forward to trying that. So the wings at the Shaved Duck, but I got to slip a little plug in for one that, this is going a little bit off the reservation, but we got to mention Bauman's Wings. Oh, you can't talk it's about Wings It's not a barbecue without, joint, no. but they are the best. We've talked about them before on this podcast, and they're, they're, just, they're just excellent. And they, they make them on weekends only. They sometimes make them on Thursdays, so you kind of have to find out what's going on. But they have a pork and poultry rub that they use there, and they slow smoke them with a coated on both sides. And, and that's it. And I've got this pork and poultry rub at home. It is really, really good. But what I didn't realize until I started asking questions, I said, there's certainly there's something more going on there, right? And he goes, yes, there is. They are actually marinated overnight in, wait for it, wishbone Italian dressing. No. How about no. that? 
just there's talk about something from your Are youth. Are you kidding me? And never he goes, you gotta gotta keep that moisture in there. So wow. that's the secret wishbone. And we've all heard of that as a marinade, and the folks at Bauman's use it also. Oh, that's great. Bauman's is definitely in the conversation for bet. Like if we do a wing draft, I think we might actually come to blows about who gets yeah, Bauman's. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a it's a top of the wing pile for sure. I took them to, you know, Super Bowl parties and these potluck oh, yeah. parties, and they're always the first to go. They're just awesome. Yes. All right. Chicken is the next category in our draft today. Yeah. And do you get to go first for chicken? Uh, I'm starting to lose no, count. No, no, go ahead. And go I'm getting first. so hungry here. I know, you know that I know. Just... I'm losing track of things. So chicken, another wild card I'm going to throw at you. I'm going me hungry, which I guess you could call their jerk chicken Jamaican, it, it's it Jamaican is. Barbecue. It's most definitely, but this is Jamaican barbecue. I'll give you that one. So I'm going me hungry. They're so quintessential, like Jamaican jerk chicken. Oh my goodness. You want to talk about your mouth tingling. This is just luxurious. You get this char, you get this perfect seasoning, you get this succulent meat. Oh my gosh. I mean, what a wonderful place. It's on a St. Charles Rock Road in an old steak and shake. They do soul food. They do smoked meats. They do all sorts of Jamaican food. You're going to get some really great side dishes there. You're going to get like Caribbean style greens. You're going to get all the things. So pile up on the side. hides there a little bit. Yes. A lot of people don't know about it or don't know what the heck me hungry is. Oh, but it's, it's Jamaican style barbecue. Yeah. They also have a food truck, which I often see it very near uh, Union and Page. So and that's usually fired up pretty regularly. So if you're close to the city, maybe check that out. But me hungry, definitely for my chicken. I'm going to go with something a little more traditional. Again, this is in the Pappy's family of restaurants. This is Adam's Smokehouse. They oh, yeah. take a half chicken or a whole chicken, smoke it, slow smoke it. Here's the secret. They glaze it with a cranberry cayenne sauce. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Doesn't that sound good? Oh, wait, wait, great. I'm not done. Then they blowtorch it like, no. like they do down at Bogart's. You like to things kind of, on fire. I do. I, well, I like the caramelization. Yes. One, I like fire for sure, but the blowtorch just gives it a nice little finish. So Adam's Smokehouse for chicken, which brings us to another poultry item, turkey. Another poultry, yeah. So what do you got for turkey? You know, I... This happened 10 years ago. We did an article. On, it was called The Greatest Thing I Ever Ate. And we oh. talked to a bunch of local celebs and came up with some really interesting things. And until this recommendation, I would have never considered such a thing. But Nellie said that the turkey breast at Sugar Fire was the greatest thing he ever ate. And I thought that was just bizarre. He, he went right by the brisket and the ribs and all the the basics. Wow. And I hadn't had it yet. And you know what? It is delicious. Oh, And wow. it's just, I guess the reason is there's plenty of flavor in it and it's super duper moist. And the, the, I say that because I recently had this at Smoke and Bones also, mm -hmm. and it tasted to me the, like it was, it was the exact same. I don't know how it, it tastes like it was almost injected, but, but it, yeah. but it wasn't. It's just super moist and super delicious. And again, Smoke and Bones, Southampton, there's a 24-year-old owner there, Aaron Machado, who's, mm -hmm. I think when he started, when he was a 19-year-old restaurant oh owner, when gosh. he took it over from his dad. And interestingly enough, that's where the Pappy's family managers have their annual party. So there's another. Oh. And, and if it's good enough for those guys, you know, it's really good. Smoke and Bones on Southampton oh, for wow. turkey. That's a vote of confidence there. Well, my turkey choice is going to be OBQs, which is... I mean, it's a relative newcomer. It's not brand new, but it's a relative newcomer. It It's in that gas station barbecue uh, right. genre right. there. This is located out in Chesterfield Valley, kind of close to Long Road and Chesterfield Airport Road in a big gas station out there. Yeah, and, and I mean, the locals know the sister restaurant, OB Clark's, yes. but unless you're in West County, you might not know about OBQ's. Yes, OBQ's is a wonderful smokehouse. They have a pit master from Austin, Texas. So brisket, burnt ends, those are, you know, really great out there. But I personally love their turkey. I found their turkey to be kind of like you said, good smoked turkey has to be, it has to be juicy. It can't be dry. Like bad smoked turkey, it's dry and flavorless. Good smoked turkey, it's just so succulent, warm, soothing, comforting. And they hit all those notes there. It's just the right texture, the right amount of moisture has a little bit of like 
just a little bit of a crispy edge when you get it sliced right. It's just spot on. I highly recommend their turkey. And it's really hard to find. It's just like Thanksgiving turkey. How many? Yeah. How often is the turkey breast just dry as a bone? Same thing. That's why I, t I tend not to get that in barbecue restaurants yes. because I don't want it to be dry. But OBQs and uh, sugar fire and smoking bones. Yeah, it's kind of like when you have a really properly smoked turkey, you think, ah, I get it. Kind of like when you have a really good roasted chicken, you know. You're like, I understand why this is the ultimate comfort. Hard to do, though. That brings us to, and, and this is an interesting category, there's a lot of options in here, side dishes. Ooh, yes. So I think we probably get to pick two. Sure. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Because since side dishes At just can really. Two. I think so. I'm going to go first, and I'm going to steal or um, I'm going to lay claim to probably one of, if not the most popular side dish in St. Louis for a reason, and that is the mac and cheese at Salt and Smoke. This, Everybody knows it. Everybody oh loves it. People go to Salt and Smoke just to get that. For the mac and, and cheese. Just for their, their normal Tuesday yes. night dinner. And I mean, their brisket is fantastic as well. But yes. let me tell you, it's not a complete meal without this mac and cheese. Creamy, just velvety, luxurious cheese sauce, a little bit tangy quite rich and then they put those the cracker topping yeah, on it yeah. which just gives it such great texture it's heaven on earth mac and cheese at salt and smoke that's my number one choice i'll see your mac and cheese and raise you the baked beans at bogart oh yes that's another oh, kind of one good. that's been around most people know about it it's that got that mahogany color they're cooked under the brisket dripping so you've got that element in there oh, and wonderful. they also just in case that's not enough they add some brisket burnt ends in oh. there for good measure. So that is just, that's an awesome baked bean dish. The other one I like, which is a little bit different, is the batter fried green beans at Smoking Bones. Ooh, yes. They put a little onion seasoning in the batter and they'll give you a little ranch dressing for dipping, which I would recommend. Yes. And it's just not one of those things you expect at a barbecue restaurant, but it's unexpectedly good. Those are my two. Well, and then I'm going back. This may be a little bit, but I think you can qualify it as a side dish. The gumbo at Shay's Creole Smokehouse. We haven't talked about Shay's yet, which is on Main Street, St. Charles. It's the restaurant located inside the Old Mill Stream Inn. We've talked about their patio. But their not patio their, is fantastic. Their, their gumbo is wonderful. Shay Landry, the owner of the smokehouse portion of it, he learned how to cook in like, you know, Bayou, Louisiana, you know, not New Orleans. I mean, New Orleans is great. You know, obviously it's where you want to learn how to cook, but I'm talking like teeny little town, grandma's kitchen. This is the real deal. Their gumbo is some of the best in town and it's a great thing to pair with your barbecue. Before we leave side dishes, I'm going to sneak in another one. And Ooh. this is a, a blanket endorsement and it goes to Sugar Fire. For me, the, they are the, the captain of the dream team for side dishes because yeah. if you look on their menu, there's like, you know, the four basics and you go, yeah, what's the big deal? Well, you've got to monitor their social media because there's always specials of the day. And I just, just randomly, I looked yesterday, there were seven of them. Oh, Here wow. they are. I wrote them down. This is, the, this is what you can expect there. Mango applesauce. Oof. Cream spinach. Brisket enchilada soup. Oh, my goodness. Please. One, please. A rotten potatoes, grilled asparagus, kale Caesar, and cornbread. That's wonderful. And that's in addition to the usuals, which are fine. But anyway, that's, you always have to, that's, that's the fun of going to Sugar Fire, seeing what is on the side dish menu that day. Wow. That's impressive. Sneaked it right in there. Yeah, um, that's good. We had kind of a, a rando category. Sneaking a couple more in. Yeah. We called it a wild card. Ooh. Who's going first? Because there's a couple really hot contenders for this one. Go ahead. Go ahead. And, and yeah, well, I, and there's so many. I'm thinking of, my gosh, there's just, there's this, so many. this could go on forever, but go ahead. I'm going to narrow it down to one and a half. So I love brisket more than probably anything in the world, except for a perfectly cooked beef rib. To me, a flawless beef rib is everything you love about brisket with an exclamation point on it. So... Stellar Hog, their beef ribs. It's a weekend only, maybe yeah. even Sunday only. I, I think it's only. a Sunday only special. And oh my gosh, there, there's a reason for that. Heaven they're on big, earth. They're expensive. They're tricky. 
So it's when you see them, which isn't very often, it's usually uh, for one or two Heaven things. Heaven on earth, you get the bark, you get the pepper, you get the perfectly rendered fat, you get that satisfaction of just eating this meat off the bone. It is heaven on earth. It would probably be the main protein at my last meal on earth if I ever had to. The reason I call this a 1.5 though is because there's another relative newcomer on the scene who, by the way, has truly outstanding brisket. They were a contender for me in that category. This is Fourth City Barbecue, which is at the Fortune Teller Bar. They also do Tower Grove Farmer's Market on Saturdays. All wood smoked barbecue. And they do a beef rib also that they call their dino rib. It's not a regular offering. It's like a one-off special here and there. So I would put them up against Stellar Hog for for their, their beef rib too. And I'm glad they call it a dino rib because people that don't know what a beef rib is, it's not like a baby back. It's yeah. not just spare rib. These things are monsters. It's yeah. Fred Flintstone size. Absolutely. So dino is, is definitely appropriate. My wild card item, we just can't talk about barbecue without talking about pork steaks. Yes. St. Louis I know where is you're known going. for their pork steak. And, you know, the, the, the Mac Daddy of all pork steaks is that 30-ounce monster at Beastcraft. And, again, David Sandusky knows what he's doing. He takes Duroc pork, which is super high quality, and he's got his spice rub, and he smokes it. Then he reverse sears it, right? But what does he put on there? A mall-style barbecue sauce, a red St. Louis-style barbecue sauce. But he doesn't like slather it on there. He just 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 you know brushes it a little bit, and he lets the sauce dehydrate oh, and lets it caramelize yes, a little bit, which, yes. which you get this beautiful mahogany, cherry color. And and like I said, it's not not slathered. It's just it's this glistening perfect specimen. And he serves it only with a fork because that's all you need. Well, and I was gonna say the first time I ever had that pork steak, and this is a thick whopper of a pork steak. This is not some backyard thin, you know, it kind of can fold in half when you pick it up with your tongs. This is a monster. It's 30 ounces and 22 after it's cooked. Yes. I, I, I learned that too. But oh, still, wow. 22, is it's a, that's a monster pork steak. Yeah. But the first time I ever went to Beast years ago, gosh, I guess 2014, 2013, something around there, whenever they first opened, I asked them for a knife for the pork steak and they actually laughed at me. They just laughed. And they didn't even respond. It was a very polite, like, sweet laugh. So I wasn't offended. And then the second I just, like, barely prodded at it with my fork, I'm like, oh, I get it. Yeah. I get it now. Yeah. Pork steaks that are properly made, you don't need a knife. You could use a spoon. You can use a fork. So you can use your hands. Yes. You can. <laughs> all of the above. Well, so, George, we have our we have our dream team smokehouse here, but... I feel like we've left off some places that we love so much, so we have to give honorable mention. Again, here we go. This could go on forever. We'll try to limit it, but we've got several honorable mentions. One, I think that, you know, you talk about barbecue and vegan word and barbecue never come in the same sentence usually, except when you talk about the burnt ends at station number three. Again, yes. not a barbecue joint, but the fact that they're making burnt ends out of jackfruit and chickpea protein, I just think it's amazing. And and they're very good. And the interesting story, we've told this before, Natasha Kwan had never tasted a burnt end yeah, that's in her so life. Funny. But she'd seen pictures and she knew what they were and she created this vegan equivalent. And, and, and people said, you know, these are the best burnt ends. And she said, oh, you know, her eyes got big and said, oh, really, didn't want to tell them that she'd never tasted one before. That is such a wonderful choice. I think I'm just going to run through mine just, you know, just in the interest of, of time. And if anyone wants to keep a checklist, you talk about burnt ends. I'm going to say Heavy Smoke in St. Peter's has fantastic burnt ends. Those are maybe some of my favorite that I've had in town. Favorite special item. I'm going back to OBQs here. I think the best thing I've eaten at OBQs is this smoked pork loin that they do. I believe it's Wednesdays only. So you'll want to call ahead. This was absolutely heaven, heaven on earth. I loved it. And they also have a really great vinegar coleslaw. Let's talk about, you know, all these barbecue places make their own sauces. Some of them make six and eight sauces and it gets a little mm -hmm. dizzying. But, you know, there's red sauces, there's white sauces, there's orange sauces, but... Strangely enough, one of the best ones in town is the coffee barbecue sauce at Sugar Fire. Oh, that they, sounds wonderful. They, they get more compliments on that sauce than any of their others. 
And it's interesting. It's not that overpowering, but it really is tasty. And, and the slogan is, wake up and smell the smoker. I can't think of what I'd rather have in the morning. Have Have you ever been up to man meats in Florissant? Oh, I have. I know it's your neighborhood. It's my old so. stomping grounds. So that place is just a, an amazing thing. And I give them uh, the favorite use of a school bus for a barbecue food I truck. I love it. Because... He didn't have the money to buy a standard box truck, so he bought an old school bus, but the school bus was too long. He cut the school bus in half, cut an eight-foot section out of it, and put the two halves back together. Oh, that's so fun. And that's what he uses as his food truck. Now he has two of them, and it's just unbelievable. It's it's great fun. The side of the school bus said, Meatville School District. I mean, come on. And anyway, his, that's just too much. His, I love his, it. His food is great. They've got something called a rhino burger where brisket is the condiment oh. that goes on top of the burger. What a wonderful idea. And anyway, he's just a wonderful guy, he, extremely generous and charitable. And he also makes fork steaks with an F. Fork, oh, really? Fork steaks. So shout out to to the, the barbecue food truck that's really a school bus. And actually, there's two of them. That's a... Uh, Bob Manicky, Man Meets in Florissant, cool guy. Check out the Facebook page. You'll just feel good because they're always, I don't know how he makes any money because he's constantly giving things away. Yeah, he's he's a great guy. I remember the story when they opened, he was down to like his last $3 in their checking account and they just like took this leap of faith and it's really paid off. So it's great to see good people succeed like that. Did you ever get out to, I'm calling the, my favorite place for clucked up ribs. Yes. And I did yes. it just because I wanted to be cutesy. Clucked up ribs <laughs> out at Gobblestop Smokehouse oh, they're in, so in, in Creve Core. And they're, they're turkey ribs. They're really not ribs. It's the shoulder. It's it's the scapula if you want to get yeah. technical. But they they look like ribs. They've got char marks and they're smoked and they've got the, they smell smoky and they've got caramelized skin. It, it's just a beautiful thing. And this has been their uh, signature item for, for a long, long yeah. time. They marinate them, they season them, they smoke them, they grill them, and then that's it. And that's what they have there. And again, this is gobble stop. Only turkey and chicken items on the mm-hmm. entire menu. That's I, I don't know any place like that in the country that that's all they do is poultry. Yeah, I don't think so. And they have great turkey tips too. Turkey I tips. would say get your wing get your turkey wings with a side of turkey tips. And the They're turkey, both great. And those giant turkey legs on Fridays. Yes. Yes. It's like the old Friar Tucks at uh, Six Flags, which so great. I don't know if that exists anymore. Well, I'm going to go to favorite, I guess I'll call it like international barbecue or what have you. There's There's Chinese spare ribs. There's Korean barbecue. Korean barbecue, also one of my favorites there. But I guess we'll just kind of keep this to use of smoke in barbecue, which is why I'm not going to throw Korean in there for you. But fattened calf is outstanding. Darren and Charlene Lopez-Young, just absolutely fantastic people. They've been at Earthbound Beer forever. And I love the longanisa, the Filipino sausage that they do there. It is a wonderful sausage. So good grilled. I think you can get it in Schnooks now. You can too. get it in Schnooks. Yeah. And you can get it at Fresh Time, I think. They've got yep. a couple kinds of chicken. There's a sweet chicken, there's a spicy chicken, yes. and I think two different kinds of pork sausage, all four different kinds. Yeah. They also do really great chicken thighs. Base it in, they make this house made banana soy ketchup kind of barbecue there, which is absolutely fantastic. So that's fat and calf. delicious. It is. They get my vote for international, global. They're at Earthbound Brewing, I think, currently. They're at City Park. They've got a kiosk at Washington University. Mm-hmm. And as we speak, they just recently announced uh, the, their first brick and mortar, which is going to be on South Jefferson coming at the end of the summer, which yeah, is which is forward. great because they've been popping up around town for too long not to have a real permanent yeah, spot. Yeah, they're wonderful. Wonderful. What else we got? I'm just calling this place. I, I, you've probably been there. It's like the Pavlov of barbecue because it's <laughs> just so fetching. Big Woody's in St. Charles. You've got bluegrass music playing, yes. but it's at a nice little level. So that oh, when the, perfect. The, the pork rinds come out, you can still hear them popping from the deep fryer. They've got all the license plates on the wall. It's like, you know, this hillbilly chic kind of look. As you I, want I, for I, a smoke I house. love their, their smoker. It's an old refrigerator that they call a smokerator, no. which actually works. You know, they've got cutesy sayings up there. You know, nobody wants to hear your cat videos wear earbuds kind of thing. <laughs> And anyway, That's I just funny. I just love this place, and they've got wonderful brisket. They've got a French dip made with brisket. 
they've got another great pork steak, but their kind of signature item is called hog balls. Yes. Not, not what you think, folks. It's a fried, like a, a buttermilk hush puppy that has pork and cheese and bacon and onions. That's basically just as good as a fritter gets. Yes, absolutely. So check out, you know, it's, it's a humble place, but it's so cool. Big Woody's out in St. Charles. Let's round it up. And how about the most anticipated place that neither one of us has been? Yes. And again, as we record this, Five Aces Smokestack Lightning has just opened or just opened kind of for real on the landing. This is the descendant of the former Five Aces Barbecue in the Shaw neighborhood. They closed during the pandemic. They did a food truck. They are currently open for lunch only Monday through Friday. I know by the time that you hear this, they will be open for dinner and weekend hours on the landing. And they're hoping to have late night hours on the landing as well, which I think is a great idea. They want to inject some life into the area and give locals and tourists a reason to go back to the landing. I just think, I just, I appreciate that they're investing their time and money there. Again, and if the barbecue, if you, if, if I'm reading between the lines correctly, they're, they're kind of reviving what used to be known, what we were talking about before as St. Louis style mm -hmm. barbecue, where they're cooking over an open flame grilling rather than smoking and then saucing the goodies. And which, if you remember, this is exactly where we started this conversation. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that was St. Louis barbecue for the longest time. And then, you know, we've had all these other great genres of barbecue come up and they've given us a lot of great food, but it's exciting to see us kind of go back and embrace kind of our our roots and who and that's we what are. I'm looking forward to. It's it's going back, but it's also an evolution. They're doing other things there too. So that's Smokestack Lightning on the landing. That's where we're going to end up with this episode. We'll be right back. This episode of Our Cheats is supported by Westport Plaza. On Friday, June 14th, enjoy an unforgettable movie night at the Plaza featuring Disney's The Little Mermaid. Activities kick off at 6 p.m. and the movie starts at 7.45. Enjoy a fun-filled evening with games, face painting, and caricatures on Westport's beautiful new green space. Plus, indulge in delicious to-go meals, candy, and ice cream from the Soda Fountain Express. Adults looking to unwind can stop by the bar for beer, wine, and canned cocktails. Don't miss out on this fantastic summer movie event at Westport Plaza happening on the second Friday in June, July, and August. For more details, visit westportplaza.com slash events. And now back to the show. And that's going to lead us into the micro rant this week. It has nothing to do with smokestack lightning, folks, but it has to do with day old barbecue. Oh, what a shame. So in days past, You'd make the barbecue. Anything that wasn't sold that day was held over, usually in a pan of sauce. Sure. And that was a problem because it results in an inferior kind of a soggy product. Yes. You know, yeah. Yeah. The, the meat fell off the bone, but but it, it, that, that wasn't really a good thing only yeah. because it was sauce saturated. So when, when, again, when Mike Emerson and his team opened Pappy's 15 years ago, they popularized the when we're out, we're out concept. Yes. So get her early or, you know, that's too bad. And this was common elsewhere in the country, but not here. I mean, St. Louisans didn't like it, but they appreciated the difference in quality. It took a minute for them to explain that to people, for people to kind of get on board with that new way of doing things. And it, but now we kind of, I think everybody accepts mm -hmm. it. But, but there are some local barbecue joints that still attempt to hold over product. And, you know, I understand meat's expensive. It, it's, it's a temptation for sure, but it's a mistake that will cost barbecue joints in the long run. So I say deal with it. You know, we deal with it. We've learned to either get there early or if you pre-order in advance, they will have product for you. That's one of the benefits of technology that we didn't have years ago. So that way, everybody wins. Yeah, I. people can say there's great new ways to reheat things. I don't care about your air fryer. I don't care about whatever. <laughs> day-old meat tastes like day-old meat. So no more day-old barbecue, folks. Please, don't do it to us. That concludes this episode of Arch Eats. Be sure to follow us and share with your friends. And we always provide links in the show notes for everything you heard about today. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow along on Instagram at St. Louis Mag. And feel free to give us a follow personally at George Mayhe and Cheryl A. Bear. If you loved what you heard, show us some love by rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. And if you're hungry for even more content, you can subscribe to our dining newsletters for the freshest coverage 
on the local restaurant and culinary scene. That's it for this week. Best dishes and see you next time.